Okay, good, good morning. Um, Start our fifth panel, the last one, quite a packed one. We have seven speakers with the uh, pleasure to uh, have uh, Mladen joining us. Uh, as yesterday, uh, he was not uh, with us. So um, without um, further delay, we are going to start this panel on the uh, international um, cooperation and the role of the underwater cultural heritage uh, in cultural diplomacy. And I would like uh, to introduce uh, Mladen, our colleague, who is uh, since 20, 2011 the head of the Department of Documentation and uh, Education and from 2019 the director of the International Center for Underwater Archaeology in Zadar, Croatia. Um, Laden, you are part of a uh, different project dealing with research and protection of underwater cultural heritage and the development of uh, methods of underwater documentation. You are a member of the Coordination Committee for the Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage uh, on the Skirky Bank, and you represent uh, Croatia. The floor is yours. Thank you, Eduardo. Uh, that I was late yesterday, unfortunately, so... Uh, <laughs> But my presentation could uh, at least uh, a little bit uh, be uh, in interpreted as the name of the session uh, of this one. I will tell you a few words about our center. Uh, probably most of you are familiar, but maybe uh, just for the wider audience uh, from the group one uh, to, uh, to speak a little bit about our center, which was formed in 2007, but from 2009 it gained uh, a UNESCO category two center uh, label, let's say. Uh, this is the process which is not easy, I have to say, and uh, this is the process that has to be renewed each six years before and now each eight years. So basically we had a, a review by UNESCO in 2021 and from 2023 uh, we gained new, uh, new eight years role as a UNESCO second category center. Uh, we are still the only one in the world dealing with underwater culture heritage. So I would like to encourage others maybe to, to apply to, to this because it's not easy, uh, not easy burden to have <laughs> the only UNESCO category two center uh, for underwater archaeology worldwide. Um, basically, uh, the core activities of, the, of our center uh, are related to promotion and uh, education and the implementation of the 2001 convention, but also to education of uh, students, of uh, people from different parts, uh, parts of the world. Uh, the funding from the center comes from the Croatian government, from the Ministry of Culture, but different programs are funded by the different um, outside resources. Of course, one of them, and really important, is UNESCO, which finances different courses, different uh, elements uh, the, that we are uh, dealing with. I can mention maybe just last year's courses, uh, which are uh, related to the Central Asia and Caucasus region, that basically um, uh, were uh, financed completely by UNESCO. And uh, we are proud that we had managed to do the courses for underwater archaeologists, but also for conservators. Um, UNESCO uh, label that we have, uh, or UNESCO patronage that we have, is not only the, um, the status, uh, the, the privilege that we have, but it's also, as I said, some kind of, uh, I wouldn't say burden, but uh, obligation that we have to deal with and uh, to, to fulfill our, uh, our, our commitments to the, uh, to the UNESCO program courses. Uh, there are only 25 centers of UNESCO second category two center, uh, uh, second category centers uh, dealing with culture programs uh, in culture program area worldwide, and as I said, we are the only one that are dealing with underwater cultural heritage. Uh, main, co main, main task, let's say, that we are uh, dealing during last years are courses for the students, or maybe it's better not to call them students, but participants, because these are persons who are coming not only from the universities but also from different um, authorities worldwide, from different institutions, museums, which are dealing with underwater archaeology or basically starting to, uh, to deal with underwater archaeology. For us, it's really important uh, that um, um, not only uh, these courses that we pro provide for them, uh, but also the connections that we gain from them and the connections that they gain from us. We saw during these 15 last years that many of these participants uh, came back to us uh, with questions with uh, different uh, models of cooperations 
uh, that we've organized uh, in different countries. Uh, I don't know, we can say, namely, uh, some of them like Denmark, like Germany, like Montenegro, like Poland, so many different countries that basically, uh, together with us, started to work on different projects that for them and for us were related. Uh, we are making different kind of courses. Uh, basically, these are courses for underwater archaeology, which are basically advanced courses, uh, courses for photogrammetry, courses for different methodological uh, thing, methodologies for documentation and so on. But um, what is maybe uh, most important that uh, these courses are something that, uh, that are given to the students, to the participants, something that maybe they cannot get in their own countries. This is some kind of feedback that we have from them. Uh, in many countries, uh, they don't have the opportunity to go on the field and to work and to learn, let's say, new skills in these kind of courses. And this is why we have lots of people coming from Spain, I have to say, many, many courses and many participants also come from Spain, also from other, uh, not only European countries, but all, uh, well, worldwide. Up to now, I think we had more than 40 countries covered uh, in different courses and something like 150 participants for this uh, underwater culture heritage uh, education. Also, the, the really important part is the education in the field of conservation of underwater archaeological finds. This is something that is uh, really specialized, especially in Zadar. We have a workshop. It's not a big workshop, for, but for us it's convenient with four persons who are in charge of different uh, archaeological materials, and we uh, provide uh, courses or introductory courses for different for all materials, or maybe some kind of uh, courses that last for one month, specialized in uh, different materials like uh, wood, like metal objects, like pottery. So basically, this is mostly formed for the people who already have some knowledge, but they want to uh, really go in, into the deep for for different um, different uh, conservation processes. Some of the courses are, most of the courses, I have to say, are uh, financed by our Minister of Culture. Uh, usually students or participants have to pay their uh, trip, their arrival, let's say, to the other, but uh, usually we have them cover the sleeping, accommodation, and uh, some kind of daily allowance for food, something like this, but, and all the equipment, of course, and our, all of our knowledge. So uh, we get maybe 30 to 40 applications for each course, but we are limited with space, so we have to take four to six students for these uh, small courses. Um, one of the courses that we started last year, and for us it's really important, we talked already many, many presentations related to the uh, World War I and World War II uh, wrecks. Uh, the new course, let's say, that we are uh, dealing with and the new um, method of protection is the cathodic protection of these metal wrecks. We are, um, monitoring the wrecks in Croatia that are endangered by the decomposition of the metal in the sea environment. So we are measuring during the last three years different, uh, different measures and different elements that, uh, that provide us information how to deal with them and think about ways how to protect them. It's not an easy job, it's an expensive job, but this is something that we are trying to, uh, to, to work with. Timmy already spoke a little bit about their methods and their, their uh, views of protection. We did some projects also together with them. So this is something that we are trying to establish. This is, as I said, new. Uh, it's, it's not a new method, but it's, uh, let's say, uh, relatively uh, new course and relatively new element that we are trying to, um, to establish. Of course, it's connected because of part of the uh, ships and part of the aircrafts are uh, protected by the, by the creation uh, law. And uh, one of a few of them are also recognized by the UNESCO as we got the best practice uh, for uh, the, the system of uh, protection and uh, of the underwater culture heritage site, especially in three sites in Croatia that we see here. One of them belongs <laughs> to the uh, period of the First World War, but unfortunately is really a big ship that is uh, slowly degrading and we are trying think the ways how to protect it for the for the future not only to get the insight of the visitors uh, for the for the the, the, the sites uh, I have to say that we are really proud that after four years of restoration we finally got uh, the our complex of ex church uh, it's it's basically the church and uh, its facilities uh, that that are 
also monument uh, from 18th century uh, in Croatia, of course, with historical value from before. But we got European funds for a renovation of this part, and uh, we did this for almost four years of uh, construction works. And the idea is to have this center uh, uh, applied for the presentation and the education of underwater cultural heritage. So this is maybe an uh, aerial view of the building. If there is a point there. So this is, the church is here. Uh, these are sm uh, small reception, uh, pavilion, <coughs> dormitories, and this is our old facilities. Let's say this is one building and this is th the other building. So we got really spread in huge area um, after this uh, renovation process. I, our French, our Spanish colleagues who were there, and uh, I think they were satisfied with this. I can maybe show you just a little bit of, about this. So as I said, uh, the reception part, which is the entrance, uh, the pavilion for experimental archaeology, we call it, but it's a place where we can do different uh, workshops for children, for the, for the wider audience. Uh, dormitories for the colleagues and for the students, which we find really important for them when they come, that uh, they get free uh, accommodation <laughs> with us, uh, where they don't have to pay. Uh, and also, the, in, inside of the church, there it's divided in two, uh, two uh, parts, let's say, on upper uh, on, um, galleries on the upper part of the church, it's education and presentation part, where not only with the exhibits, but also with the uh, 3D uh, glasses or touch screens that we have here, uh, we are telling the story about underwater archaeology and about underwater culture heritage. There is one screen here dedicated to UNESCO 2001 convention, which basically shows uh, which countries uh, ratified the convention. It shows a little bit about best practices. Uh, so it's, it's a worldwide, let's say, so it's a uh, in, in kind of way promotion uh, to the people to know what is 2001 convention and what does it stand for. And this is just another image for similar. Of course, uh, the other uh, activities that we do, and I won't talk too much about them, uh, are uh, sharing the knowledge with the, the, with the wider audience, with the, with the children, with the, in the, through different uh, lectures, through different actions. One of these is uh, on the top uh, way that you see is also dealing with the cleaning of the sea. We often do the um, in connection with diving centers who are organizing uh, uh, almost once a month uh, operations of cleaning of underwater from the, the, the debris, from the garbage, from everything. Uh, we join them and uh, we promote also our activities a little bit uh, for this. Uh, maybe on the end, just to mention the, the other part of the church that we did, uh, for, uh, which is meant to be for the presentations, for the exhibitions. Some of you already been there for the, for the SOMA conference uh, two months ago. After the staff meeting, uh, we had the opening on 6th of June, this, uh, this exhibition, which is done uh, in cooperation with the uh, Spanish Ministry of Culture, uh, with ARQUA, and uh, with our embassy in, the, um, in Spain, and also Casa Mediterraneo from Spain, uh, financed by both ministries, Croatian and uh, Spanish ministries. It's related to the best practices in underwater archaeology. Um, not only uh, Croatian and Spanish ones, but also we presented all 13 ones and also the ones that are not anymore. Uh, it was presented with uh, exhibits, of course, so we, with the panels, and, and it's uh, one way of um, promoting underwater cultural health, especially in the, during this year, which is basically 20th year when Croatia ratified the, the UNESCO 2001 Convention. So uh, this project was also done because of the cooperation of uh, our center with the uh, with Spanish Ministry of, uh, of Culture, which is signed for six years. So we hope to have some more cooperations in, in the future. Thank you very much, Mladen. Uh, I have to say that the ICUA center is to, uh, to the Secretariat and to the implementation for the implementation of the convention. You are welcoming participants from all over the world, recently from Central Asia, and uh, we really look forward to uh, strengthening the cooperation in your beautiful new premises. Now, from the Adriatic to the uh, Channel of Sicily, the Canal du Cap Bon, I would like to give the floor to our colleagues Barbara and uh, Ahmed, um, starting with um, Ahmed. Okay. Gadum, you are a staff member. You are a researcher in uh, underwater archaeology at the National Institute of um, Heritage in Tunis. Um, 
you are also um, the focal point for the autonomous uh, project on the Skerki Bank, Tunisian continental shelf of this uh, multilateral cooperation um, mission that we organized in uh, 2022. Um, I would like to give you the floor to um, present the mission which was uh, implemented on the Tunisian continental shelf and then the floor will be to Barbara to uh, complement and um, share with us what happened on the Italian continental shelf. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, good morning everyone. I would like first of all to thank uh, really the organizers uh, the Ministry of Culture of Spain and UNESCO staff for the efforts and uh, especially for this uh, um, nice meeting with accommodation and really sympathetic people, nice uh, uh, persons that we are meeting uh, every time. And um, in the same time also, I don't know if there is some people online that we can uh, send, I don't know, oh, well, no, no, anyways. So I'm thinking about everyone. I'm like this. <laughs> so, um, well, today I'm going to talk about uh, the, this uh, multilateral mission that we had together, and it was a pleasure really to work uh, with uh, um, international teams. And I would say that without uh, the convention of, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about the Tunisian part, the autonomous project that. Uh, my uh, colleague and friend Barbara Davide will talk about the Italian part. And I would say that um, without the um, uh, convention of 2001, we would not be here today, of course, to hold this meeting, and uh, we wouldn't also be able to, uh, to work in 2002 to go to the field and run explorations with such excellent results. Um, even if it came after uh, the 20th um, birthday uh, or anniversary uh, and after more than 70 countries that ratified it at that time, I mean uh, in 2022, uh, and not always with the, not always uh, unani unanimously, the 2020 conventions uh, showed its usefulness and necessity through uh, two things, from my point of view. Uh, it's ethical principles, which are protections, studying, uh, giving the value to the discoveries. And the second thing is, or the second point is the deployment of the cooperation mechanism relying upon the article and uh, 10 of the convention and giving us practical and pragmatic tools to set up cooperation projects outside the territorial waters. Um, in fact, the pragmatic uh, uh, cooperation mechanism tools allowed us to start since 2018 uh, this important project under the IGs of the UNESCO and uh, an autonomous project inside this multilateral mission was undertaken on the Tunisian continental shelf I'm talking about now, uh, under the coordination of Tunisia, of course, for the Tunisian part. Um, for the first time, eight countries were present and motivated and uh, uh, they were, uh, I mean, uh, here to strengthen and enhance this process. Um, Algeria, uh, France, Croatia, uh, Croatia uh, Egypt, Morocco, Spain, uh, Italy, and of course Tunisia. And they are all belonging of the convention at that time. And still. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I mean, the convention, it, it, they were also, um, I mean, uh, uh, they decided to join their efforts um, and their know-how, expertise, and even resources for this uh, international mission under the IGS of UNESCO, again, conduct, conducted in the summer of 2022. Just a brief uh, historical uh, overview of uh, how it started in 2018. 
the Secretary of the Convention in 2001, informs states parties of the notification of discoveries and um, um, located on the Tunisian uh, continental uh, shelf and inviting them to propose the best way uh, to uh, manage the site and how it could be protected. And uh, after that, uh, those countries that I was mentioning declared their uh, intention and willingness to ensure the protection of potentially threatened sites. And in the same time, for this part of the project, Tunisia has expressed its intention to be uh, uh, the lead uh, to coordinate uh, this project. Um, 2019, uh, in Tunis, the first uh, meeting information and um, uh, with the involved countries and uh, uh, I mean they preparing this, this joint mission, joint mission uh, of the inventory of the underwater cultural heritage. Then 2020 and 21, we know all what's happening in the world and uh, several meetings online. Uh, of the steering committee to establish um, a working strategy with realistic methods. And 2022, of course, archaeological survey, a uh, mission to evaluate and to understand the history, uh, the historical, sorry, and archaeological potential of uh, the sites. And uh, the aims, uh, of course, of the project was, the priority was to as said Timmy, uh, I mean, mapping, surveying, understanding, analyzing, uh, so that we can uh, know what to do uh, uh, later on. And uh, the implementation of the co 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 cooperation, sorry, mechanism between states, parties uh, to the uh, 2000, uh, 2001 Convention of the Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage uh, by also establishing uh, scientific, this is the second aim, uh, is to have this scientific collaboration between experts and uh, partners. And in the same time, also strengthening the scientific and technical capacities of the participants. And sharing knowledge and exchange experiences um, and the know-how between them. And uh, I mean the experts who are representing their countries, the partner states. Well, if um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, I wasn't supposed to present the results because I think that we've done this uh, in the way in uh, the 8th of June in 2023 in the headquarters of uh, UNESCO in Paris, but just to show um, some photos of this expedition very rapidly, and uh, uh, we are uh, so. Well, this is important. Yes, this is to show the team and people with their names. Uh, it's important for me to put this slide because it reminds the people who were um, on the field and to congratulate them again and uh, thank them for the, uh, their uh, efforts and their time. Um, maybe I will show uh, this uh, this is the REC one uh, rapidly. I mean, it's uh, a cargo with uh, from the 20th century. Um, this is also the second uh, REC, which is uh, a wooden um, um, what is it? Uh, voilier, uh, which uh, well, in, uh, a boat. I mean, a wooden REC. Uh, from the 19, uh, uh, the end of the 19 or the, or the beginning of the 20, uh, 20th century. Um, and also we have, uh, those are the most important, I mean, discoveries. And it's very rapid, it's not, uh, we are not dealing with the results here, as I said. And this is the third rack, which is uh, one of the most important to me because I'm working on this uh, era, uh, which is, of course, <laughs> Uh, the wreck with the Amphora uh, Dressel 24, which is probably going, we still don't know from which uh, uh, area, from the Mediterranean uh, they are, um, they come, but it's generally it's going from the end of the first uh, century before Christ until the middle of the second century. Um, 
to conclude some conclusions, it's time to conclude, I think. Um, and lesson learned from this project, in my point of view. It's, uh, this project is considered uh, as an excellent achievement and a success at this stage, um, I mean, of, for the international community, especially regarding the new knowledge that we have now on the site. And again, it's the first time that there is this implementation of the 2021 UNESCO Convention, very dear to all of us. And an important also uh, exercise for common work team and uh, people coming from several countries, uh, several people, several cultural, cultural backgrounds, I would say, with its advantages and disadvantages, of course, but it's completely human and it's, of course, surmountable, no problem. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's, the, it's a part of the project. It's very important also, this one. It's good. It's also a guarantee of trust and confidence that it was possible to work together on such heritage which is precious, a precious common good for humanity and in the same time while respecting, I mean, the sovereignty of states on their territories. And this is also a very interesting uh, and positive point. So the underwater cultural heritage as a preci is precious, precious, fragile testimony of our common history. Uh, and there are, uh, you know, looting, uh, marine industrial work, um, climate change have a very negative impact on it. And hopefully the convention is now comes as an answer to all this by giving us a common legal framework which can certain, certainly be improved because we remark that there are things that we need to improve. And it encourage, encourages certainly protection and help to fight against those commercial exploitation that we were talking about for this heritage. Many tools such as training, building capacities of international teams, awareness, cooperation between states, um, keeping in situ, uh, I mean conservation in situ and uh, mutual um, data exchanges are very available for the protection of our intercultural heritage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ahmed. That was a very good uh, presentation to this very new and unique uh, mission in the history of the convention. Um, 22 years after its adoption. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Barbara. Barbara is a staff member. Um, you are the director of the underwater archaeology of the uh, Central Institute of Restoration in Rome. And you uh, are going to present us the second part of the mission, which yeah. was on the Italian continental shelf. The yes. floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I, I have to warm thanks the Minister of Culture and UNESCO for the organizations, uh, wonderful organization of this uh, meeting that is very useful for us. Uh, a good opportunity to share our experiences and to stay together uh, with friends and colleagues. So um, um, I'm very happy to be here with the colleague from Tunisia to present this mission uh, and uh, the result, our experience that we want to share for you, also for the, pro, pro, uh, the, 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 the next and the future um, uh, programs. The experience of the cooperation process for the protection of underwater cultural heritage in the Skerki Banks and in Sicilia Channel, which led to the first international mission under UNESCO ages, uh, uh, like my colleague has underlined, has demonstrated all the potential of a group of effort led by technical experts with the sole objective of following the path indicated from, by the 2001 Convention for the Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage in international waters. 
despite the challenge posed by the pandemic over two and, and half years, this endeavor, the first of this kind, resulted from a nearly four years long collaborative effort among eight Mediterranean countries. The collaboration not only provides new data confirming the significance of the Sicilian channel Eskerki Bank from antiquity to modern times, but also re-identified shipwrecks discovered by Ballard, Robert Ballard and Marguerite McCann in the late 1980s and 1990s. These wrecks found about 15 nautical miles from the Skerki Bank were erroneously thought to be closer to the bank itself. We deemed it was necessary to verify the state of preservation through a brief instrumental uh, exploration, also to finally close the loop on the past events that have significantly stimulated an international debate leading to the birth of the 2001 Convention. Ballard Expe Expedition, uh, everybody knows, discovered eight ancient shipwrecks in a 210 kilometers area at the depth between 600 to meters. Five of these dated for the first century BC to the fourth century AD. And the project used at that time advanced deep water technologies like toward acoustic and visual search vehicle and nuclear research submarine and an advanced ROV, uh, marking a significant advancement in deep water archaeology. The finding published in the book uh, that I, I showed you here by McCann and Oleson provided new data on the central Mediterranean trading route. From August 24 to um, uh, the 27th, so a few days, um, Italy, uh, under my direction, um, direct coordinated the mission of the Italian continental chef to document these shipwrecks. And uh, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to thank, uh, first of all, uh, before continuing my presentation, the DRASM, uh, with the director of the DRASM, and Franca Cibecchini, that directed the technical uh, activities uh, in, uh, in on the continent, Italian continental chef and the Tunisia continental chef, where, because thanks to their uh, um, equipment, uh, very sophisticated, we can have the result of the data that we have presented today. The mission aimed to verify the location of the wrecks identified by Ballard Expedition. It's, it's not uh, um, 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 easy to come back on the same place uh, underwater and also the coordinates when that was uh, uh, registered in, uh, in, uh, in a long time ago could be wrong, so it could be, it, it have to be interested to relocate uh, uh, and check the, the position of the Wrecks. And to document this, uh, uh, the, the state of conservation, the preservation status, and explore um, uh, them uh, using new technological advances in robotic for archaeological research, uh, and we use the ROV Arthur uh, of DRASM. And we have uh, did a technical um, uh, resource like the 3D modeling. We have present to you the 3D modeling of these wrecks. The ROVR2 provide high quality images of the site, allowing the creation of orthophotos and 3D models by uh, the National Superintendency for Underwater Cultural Heritage that I direct at the time. And uh, the mission confirmed that the site, uh, the, the three wrecks, wreck uh, Skerki F, D, and G, um, the only only once we were able to identify, due to the limited time at our disposal, are well preserved and have not been affected by sedimentation, by erosion, or human activities. Plastic debris was observed among the archaeological remains in some cases, so the plastic is everywhere, unfortunately. Here, just for the uh, underwater archaeologists care that are here, so I want to show briefly the, the 3D relief with the, the data, uh, the number of the um, 
pictures, videos, and uh, um, uh, million faces model optimizes of the three wrecks. Uh, the key results of the mission include new archaeological data for uh, the wreck G. Uh, we document a, a new part of the wreck, high quality images and orthophotos of the wreck, 3D model uh, of the wreck, and now I try to, no, uh, I have to, to do like this, sorry, to start the, the video. Yes. And uh, I speak and uh, the, you can see the images of the 3D models by, by uh, Matteo Collina of the National Superintendency for Underwater Cultural Heritage. Uh, we, uh, thanks to this mission, together with uh, the Tunisian uh, uh, colleague and all the team of that participated of the countries, we now have a definition of a central protection zone for underwater cultural heritage. We have the opportunity to training of experts and professionals in underwater archaeological survey methods. Not uh, everybody has the opportunity in, a, in, in all the country to participate to deep water activities with these uh, technologies. And I thank very much the French team that uh, share with us their knowledge, their experience, and give us the possibility also to use the, and to um, uh, um, uh, uh, enter in deep of the uh, fun, uh, the, the activities on this typology of research and opportunities for international research to cooperate and gain unique deep sea archaeological experience. We established in best practice for the 2001 convention implementation, demonstrating its effectiveness and developing a, a model procedure for other underwater cultural heritage cooperation cases. And we will see that uh, uh, another one is starting to, to, um, uh, to start. <laughs> now that we have concluded the field work, we we are not stopped to work, but we are analyzing and processing the collect data to share it with the scientific community and to the general public through a publication. We start with UNESCO with the, um, a, an exposition, a photographic exposition to share the data, but it's important to share also the uh, scientific uh, uh, result of this very important uh, um, archaeological mission, multilateral archaeological archaeological mission. And uh, one can easily imagine it is impossible to thank uh, everyone who has contributed to this, this project over the past five years without regrettably forgetting someone. However, allow me to extend particular gratitude to the General Secreta Secretariat of our Ministry of Culture, to the UNESCO Office of our Ministry, Maria Assunta Pece and Alessandro Asta. They are not here, but I want to thank them. Alessandro Asta, the focal point of the UNESCO Office, to the Ministry, Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and to our delegation to the UNESCO. They not only believe in this initiative from the beginning, but also place unconditional trust in our our work as cultural heritage experts. And finally, I want to thank all the colleagues who have worked on the realization of this stimulating, stimulating and challenging project that someone are here and someone are in that country, but it was really a challenging project and uh, I'm happy to be here with the colleague from Tunisia to uh, share with you our experience. Thank you for and your you did attention. It. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Okay, let's our journey and um, go into the Baltic Sea with uh, Maeli. Maeli, you are a staff member. Uh, you are advisor on underwater archaeology at the Estonian National Heritage Board and chairperson of the Baltic Sea Region Working Group on Underwater Cultural Heritage. The floor is yours, Maeli. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. First of all, I would like to thank thank uh, Spanish Ministry of Culture for organizing uh, this event and UNESCO and uh, for inviting me 
uh, to introduce um, Baltic Sea, UCH, and, and cooperation. So the Baltic Sea is home to a vast and invaluable underwater cultural heritage that reflects the region's rich maritime history. <clears throat> and this heritage encompassing shipwrecks, submerged uh, settlements, and other archaeological sites offers unique insights into past human activities, trade routes, and cultural exchanges. And uh, <clears throat> to safeguard and put um, uh, UCH, countries around uh, the Baltic Sea have been actively collaborating through the Baltic Sea Region Underwater Cultural Heritage Working Group, established in 2000 under the umbrella of the Baltic Region Heritage Committee. So the members of the working group are experts, scientists, and cultural heritage managers. And during the last 20 years, there have, there have been active members uh, representing um, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, and the Holland Islands, and Germany, mecklenburg vorpommern and Schleswig-Holstein, Latvia, Lithuania, Norway, Poland, and Sweden. And uh, three of them, uh, uh, Lithuania, Estonia, and Poland, signed uh, uh, UNESCO 21 uh, Convention. Uh, the group has organized its work mainly in two ways, uh, launching special projects and roundtable discussions. And during these discussions, members report on the status of ongoing management issues, topical themes and activities in each country, aiming to find common solutions uh, to problems. And the working group serves uh, as a platform for exchanging knowledge, expertise, and best practices among the Baltic uh, Sea nations. But it is even more important to share our mistakes. So during these uh, 24 uh, years, there have been remarkable changes in maritime archaeology, technological development, and the use of marine areas and the pressure on the, on the economic exploitation of marine areas is, is increasing, and more and more new uses are being found. Therefore, our common challenges that have to solve are more and more complicated. So um, our common challenge is also to introduce the heritage of the Baltic Sea. And one of the most important um, the last joint creations was uh, a publication of the underwater heritage of the Baltic Sea and, um, and along the coast of Norway. So approximately 18 years ago, the Baltic Sea states led by Swedish National Maritime Museum summarized the situation uh, regarding the scientific research of underwater cultural heritage, existing legislation, training, recreational diving, and dive tourism in the framework of the Rutilus project. So the final report of the Rutilus project notes that the Baltic Sea states have had a very different historical approach to underwater cultural heritage. Um, and in addition, each country needed to present the uh, most valuable submerged monuments which, uh, with uh, the purpose of visualizing the otherwise hidden and the invisible underwater uh, UCH. Uh, it has been updated according to what we view as the most valuable and rep representative part of today. Uh, we had tried to present various types of UCH originating from different periods. So the publication certainly also has another significant meaning uh, for the working group. This marks the end of the cooperation with Russia. The book was published in January 2022, and the underwater cultural heritage in Russian waters is also represented there. Uh, the members of the working groups have initiated and led several common projects, and the teams of the projects have ranged from safeguarding and monitoring of wrecks 
diving tourism and dive trails and parks, uh, world heritage, heritage, digitizing and opening access to maritime sources in archives, and uh, the, to maritime spatial planning and flu growth. Uh, members of the working group uh, find that all members and member countries can benefit from these different projects. Also, not all members are participating in all uh, projects. Um, shipwrecks um, in the Baltic Sea um, contain important uh, information about historical events, and uh, they are separate historical sources uh, that are, in, are an irreplaceable supplement to written sources. So two world wars took place in the 20th century, uh, which is why most of the century's underwater heritage is war heritage. So the um, heritage of uh, World War II is a particularly valuable source and direct witness to the events uh, as the material, material mainly, hid, mainly hidden in Russian archives have never been freely accessible to researchers and only published material can be used. Uh, the, real, the reliability of which cannot be completely certain. Uh, during the mm, so during the 20th century, hundreds of uh, potentially dangerous ships have sunk in Baltic Sea and can pose a danger uh, to the maritime environment. Now, basically in three ways, uh, fuel, munition, and, uh, and uh, so-called coast nets. And for example, the paravan on the slide uh, may have contained about eight uh, kilos of mercury. So therefore, we have not yet managed to solve the problems caused by the wars of the 20th century. And there are simply an incredible number of, uh, of them. So the, the task of the manager of cultural heritage is to ensure that the source value of these wrecks is also preserved while eliminating the environmental uh, damage caused by the wrecks of the 20th century. Um, <clears throat> they are today the only sources that help us to understand historical events in the most objective way. So therefore, uh, the main topic for the working group in the coming years will be unwanted heritage, that is the war heritage of the 20th century. It's uh, mapping and identifying in the Baltic Sea and related problems. And of course, the second uh, topic is always um, uh, who who is the next uh, with ratifying uh, UNESCO 21 uh, convention. Uh, as expert, we, are, we agreed that it is um, uh, very important uh, to the countries to, to ratify uh, convention because it helps, uh, uh, it really helps uh, to, break, to protect our UCH. So thank you. Thank you very much, Maile. It's a fascinating uh, region and, and project, and we are working on a possible uh, next um, multilateral cooperation mission in the region. So this is something we, are, we will follow together. Now, um, I'd like to give the, the floor to um, another exemplary cooperation between Spain and Ireland with uh, Connie and Pablo. Um, Connie, you are a senior archaeologist uh, from the National Monument Service. You are head of the Underwater Archaeology Unit. And uh, you are going to present us your cooperation with Spain in um, one or several projects that you are currently uh, leading. The floor is yours. Thank you. Pablo, you want to start? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Pablo, you are head of unit <laughs> of the 2001 convention at the Ministry of Culture. And uh, you are uh, part of the Directorate of Fine Arts and Cultural Heritage, and particularly in charge of the 1972, 2001, and 2003 convention. So you have a lot of responsibilities on your shoulders. And <laughs> 
The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I'm going to speak in Spanish, if you don't mind. <coughs> bueno, pues muchas gracias. Por eso quería ser prim hablar primero para que darle la palabra. I will be very brief so that I give the floor to Connie for her presentation. Well, first of all, because of the status of my voice, I am regretting that last night at dinner and the wine cultural heritage. Y, y ahora van a creer que es verdad, ¿no? Eh, pero, pero no, no tiene nada que ver. Por la voz no tiene nada que ver. Well, but my voice does not come from the work that I do regarding wine uh, heritage. I just would like to explain to you, to introduce to you the relationship between, the, between Spain and Ireland, or Ireland and Spain, about a phenomenon which is very important for Spain, what we refer to in Spain as the uh, Great Armed Navy. And actually, it was a name um, well given by UK Invincible Navy Army, where one third sunk when they were going around Scotland and Ireland, where they're navigating around Scotland and Ireland. Around 40 vessels, 40 ships were sunk in 1588. For us, that is a fear project, as we understand the UCH, is a paradigm of shared heritage. This is also a paradigmatic example of UCH. And two days ago, an idea came to mind when I was giving a, a presentation in public. And shared heritage, contrary to shared, uh, well, to the distributed heritage, entails generosity. It is an act of generosity. From the Ministry of Culture, the gift that our Irish colleagues give us is precisely that, that project. Our relationship with the shipwrecks of the Invincible, Invisible Army, um, part of the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry of Culture have been very generous and they count very much on the Spanish Navy, especially when it comes to Sligo. Uh, homages or tributes. Our relationship started back in 2015 where our deputy director, Maria, and the director at the time of the Underwater uh, Heritage Museum were invited to take part in the project because some of the canyons of the Juliana, one of the shipwrecks, were taken out. That was a discovery that was a discovery that was the start of a very important list or set of uh, work uh, carried out about the Spanish Invincible Army. And then we heard about the uh, commemorations that were done through a Sligo uh, organization. I would like, to, later on, I would refer to civil society participation. So therefore, we realized the importance of cultural heritage for Irish society. Last year, through the Spanish Embassy, we were invited to take part in, uh, uh, in a conference about UCH on the occasion of the uh, commemorations of uh, tributes of Sligo. And then we resumed our collaboration. Uh, we intensified it. We did that in two ways. There are three aspects that are highly productive First of all, the relationship between your department and our department. We have organized, uh, we are meeting up on a monthly basis where we exchange information, we exchange databases, and we from Spain, we can provide archive documentation, which is essential to you. And then them, they also give us information about the archaeology surveys. They have invited us to participate. We are looking forward to that, but unfortunately, we couldn't make it as we had to organize this meeting. But as I say, we are really looking forward to, 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 to give continuation to the, these relationships as they are very fruitful. And of course, the scientific aspects is all the more important. We are 
Also, undergoing another process, which sometimes it is a bit overwhelming for us, which is the promotion and the signature of a memorandum of understanding with Ireland about the protection of UCH. We are talking about framework memorandum, a set of intentions, but as I say, we are working on it, we are very, very close to the signature. And now the ball is on the roof of the legal services in Ireland, and well, we strongly believe that it will be a very important framework. Secondly, dissemination. Dissemination, which was for us, it was just a discovery to see how it is known and interpreted by the civil society. The UCH in Ireland, how it is known by the uh, citizens, it has just become part of their intangible heritage. At this point in time, we are carrying out a beautiful project, which is kind of a continuation of what they did about the Spanish army, about the Francisco de Cuellar letter, the captain. He was one of the few Spaniards who not only managed to save themselves from the, uh, to come out live of the uh, sinking, and he, after an extraordinary adventure, he manages to escape, and then he reaches uh, the Netherlands, and he wrote to the king, uh, sharing his experience. And it has a passionate adventure. And actually, it has, the, has been a documentary about his life. And actually, we intend to jointly publish the actual letter. There is a copy of the letter. And that letter is stored or is uh, in the Spanish Academy of Heritage. We would like that letter to be translated into, well, to be shown in three languages. And um, well, we would like, I would like to publicly thank the Irish government and more specifically to you for your gift. This is a gift. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. I feel like I'm very loud. Um, thank you, um, Pablo. Um, as Pablo was saying, we have had engagement since 2015, really, when we did our project on the, the Armada wreck. Um, and our bilaterals then kind of kicked off from there, from 2016. Um, so we have had growing connections and collaborations um, and collaborative ideas since that time. Um, uh, I won't go into the MOU, it's, at our, it's, at, it's in our, um, our legal space at the moment, as you said, and we're hoping that that will be um, um, kind of considered and result come from that pretty soon. Um, what I'd like to do today is kind of give an idea of the wider links that we have with Spain and, and put our collaborations that are ongoing now specific to the Armada in a kind of a wider context, very briefly, of course. Um, I suppose Ireland really has had a long history with Spain um, from various, in various ways. Um, our origin tales go back um, to the idea and the, the mythology that we actually came from Spain, um, the Milesians, as we've referred to them in, 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 in folklore, um, were Mil España, meaning the soldiers of Spain, and the, the folklore is that three sons of the king of Mil, Mil the king, uh, arrived into Ireland and established the race in Ireland. So even our mythologies have this link across the sea with Spain. Um, Another lesser well-known, but well, lesser well-known outside of Ireland, I suppose, is a, 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 a factual um, occurrence is in 1529 when the Treaty of Dingle was signed between the then Earl of Desmond, who was the ruling lord in Ireland. We were a tribal landscape, Gaelic landscape, and he signed the Treaty of Dingle with Charles V of Spain. And this gave, um, I suppose it was the first example of a kind of a diplomatic collaboration um, that we have, and it gave special, um, it was between the Spanish nobility and the Irish, particularly the Irish emigre and the Irish exiles who were there um, from that time onwards. But it was the first kind of um, formal legal and constitutional foundation um, 
um, to the rights of citizenships and other privileges that Irish exiles and emigre, as I say, enjoyed in Habsburg, Spain, Austria and the Netherlands at that time. And that was in place right up to the, from the 16th century up to the early part of the 20th century when it was, um, when it was re revoked. So it, it's something that Dingle, which is a, a, a town at the, in the southwest of um, Ireland, celebrates every year. Um, so it was important to the sound of town of Dingle, which was a, a vibrant port during the medieval periods and into the later medieval and modern times and um, had large trading, um, trading uh, business w across the ocean with Spain. So hence the Treaty of Spain, uh, Dingle. Um, of course, I suppose shipwrecks are the most obvious um, links we have as well. It's not just about the Armada. Um, I should say we have about a potential of 116 specific wrecks, uh, Spanish wrecks in our waters, um, uh, dating anything from the 16th up to, the, again, the 20th century. Um, and um, this is very much the shared heritage that we're collaborating on now. Um, here you see uh, the top Part of the slide is our work on the Armada wreck La Juliana um, in 2015. Um, three wrecks were wrecked, as, as Pablo said, in Strida Bay um, out of the 26 uh, recorded wrecks of the Armada going down around our coast. Uh, six of those have been identified, and three of them went down in Sligo. And, um, Every now and then after storms, it only happens every couple of years, they become uncovered. And in 2015, after the series of bad storms that, that year and then 2014, uh, we monitor, we monitor the site every year and it was uncovered. So uh, we did um, a lot of work there in April, Ju April June and uh, July, uh, which resulted in excavation and the recovery of nine cannon bronze cannon. Um, and they're amazing cannon. Uh, three had come up in the 80s when the site was discovered by divers. And so there's 12 cannon now from La Juliana um, site itself. And there's possibly another 60 still down there. Um, but I suppose when we think about the Armada, we think about that singular event and we, we link in with our colleagues in Spain because it's very much um, um, a specific a type of shipwrecks that we can do, but the wrecks themselves to, to, I suppose, drill down into the idea of the shipwreck archaeology has a much bigger story to tell in if we look at individual ships. And just even taking La Juliana, which was a Catalan ship, so definitively Spanish, but the guns from her are, are from, she was built in, in 1570 as a trading ship um, in Spain. She had a, a long life of 18 years. Um, she was requisitioned by Spain and she took part, um, originally she took part as part of the Christian states in the Battle of Lepanto and one of the cannons we think comes from that um, event. And then she went on to form part of the fleet, uh, transport fleet of the Battle of the Azores. And then she finally sank and was wrecked as part of the Armada campaign. So the, the life of the ship itself tells its own story. The guns, again, tell their own story. Um, some of the guns are from Genoa and some of the guns are from Sicily. So we have links with our colleagues in Italy. And right next to her, uh, wrecked, is the Santa Maria de Vision, which is at the time was a requisitioned Ragusan ship. So then we have links to our colleagues in Croatia. And so we have all these links if you start looking in detail at what this Armada campaign tells us. So it's, it's a big, bigger growing story. But as I say, it's not just about um, the artifact, uh, the Armada shipwrecks. We have other shipwrecks as well. And I just put one of them up there, the Santa Ana Maria, which was a 1628 uh, ship. Galleon. Um, she shouldn't be in our waters at all, really. Uh, she was part of the treasure fleet um, um, in her um, coming back from uh, South America and uh, holding up in Cuba. And she was part of the fleet, the Spanish fleet that was captured by the Dutch. And she was being brought back to Holland and she got separated from the um, privateer, Piet Hein, and uh, in a storm on the way back. And she was subsequently captured by a British privateer being brought back to England 
caught in another storm, and then she ended up wrecked in one of our harbors. So we have um, inherited the wreck, which is great because she's a beautiful wreck. Um, but she was found in the 70s, and a lot of material was brought up off her by divers um, over, over that period before we had enacted uh, protection for shipwrecks. But one of the divers came to us a, a couple of years ago, and he was an elderly man, and he has no children, and he said that he was worried that when he died, he wouldn't know where the material would go. Uh, so he handed it over to the state. So we have that now in our museum collection, and I just put up a few examples of, of the material here. Uh, this year, we hope to go down and do some work on the wreck, just to do some mapping. There is a ballast mound there, there's some timbers, there's iron cannon, which the divers weren't interested in, they just raised some of the bronze cannon. So there is work to be done on the wreck itself. So uh, I suppose I'm just putting that up there as an example, and we have the full account of the, um, the wrecking as well, because there was a whole court case in 1628 and 1629 to do with the uh, wrecking of the ship. Um, so we have a really good account of the Admiralty and Spain and um, uh, the West Indies Company of Holland arguing with each other as to who should have rights of the wreck back in 1628 and 1629. So even that in itself is a good story. But we have more than that in common and, and as, as shared, um, a shared collaboration. We also have, as Pablo said, the potential of research, both tangibly in the artifacts and the archaeology and the shipwrecks, but also intangibly the stories associated with the Armada particularly, but with other shipwrecks is, as well. Um, one that up in the north of the country where um, two of, our, two of the, our Armada ships are, are located, and there's a tale there that the horses who managed to survive the wrecking of the ships came ashore and their lineage is in the horses up in Donegal, for instance. The people talk about the horses there doing walking differently, almost like Spanish horses. So now that has never been tested, but it's all part of the intangible heritage associated with these shipwrecks. So uh, we're slowly talking to the people and gathering that information as well. And then there are the commemorations. Um, every year, and this is very much a community, uh, we can't take um, credit for this. This is very much a Sligo community initiative, all volunteers, but they're a great, um, they're a great community. And because of the three shipwrecks that went down um, a number of years ago, they started to um, uh, organize commemorations, annual commemorations in September every year. And it's grown and grown and grown, and, and it's really, really impressive now. Uh, the Spanish um, ambassador goes there every year, our colleagues have been there. We go there every year and we support them in funding as well. And a lot of Spanish people holiday that time of year so they can go to the commemorations. So uh, you can look it up, Our Spanish Armada Ireland is the, the website for the community. Um, two of your naval um, ships come there, one or two of your naval ships come there every year as part of the commemorations. And one year when we were there in, in 2015, um, we also had our own commemoration there, you see it, uh, where we on the day, the 21st of September, we laid some rates off offshore on the site of the Armada. Um, uh, over 1,100 men were, were died on the beach at um, Striga in 1588, so that's why these commemorations are there, to remember the men, not just remember the ships and the wrecks, but the human story behind it all. And it was a huge tragedy uh, locally as well. And finally, um, I won't go into it, but as Pablo said, we are also working on this um, joint publication um, and uh, of the Carta, which I think will be really unique. Um, we have, on, our, on both sides, we have taken on experts, um, histo historians, to write some of the chapters, and, and um, so I'll say no more, more about that. It's in process, so uh, you'll hear more, more about it in due course. So that's it, thank you. Thank, thank you, Connie, it's how culture and cultural cooperation uh, can uh, foster uh, the, uh, the dialogue between the countries and, and, and promote um, peace building, actually. Yes. Our seventh speaker is uh, Javier, uh, Javier Alberti Longbind. You are a doctor in modern uh, history. You are specialized in maritime history of the Basque country. 
Uh, you are the scientific director of the uh, Basque Maritime Museum in San Sebastian and the director of research in the department of Albaola. And you are going to talk to us about a case that you are currently um, um, like work, working on. You are working on. Yes, please. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Antes de, de entrar en materia, eh. Before I go into the topic of my presentation, I would like to thank the uh, Ministry for Culture and the Department for Heritage for giving me the opportunity to be here to share this, uh, to participate in this UNESCO meeting. I learned a lot, I'm learning a lot, and I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very much, Pablo, Paloma. Uh, I would like to thank the, the whole team of uh, that, uh, that have taken part in the organizing of this uh, <coughs> meeting and the whole department. Very briefly, I'd like to tell you about our entity that started as an association over 20 years ago. It started in the Basque Country with a name to recover Navy heritage of the Basque Country and more specifically the intangible aspects of that heritage. We are interested in recovering the logics, the processes, techniques that our centers used for the naval uh, constructions. Up until now, we have been focusing on tangible heritage that has been widely discussed here, but intangible aspects of the heritage were also uh, mentioned here or discussed here. That's what actually we focus on, that's, uh, but that is translated, that is materialized. The intangible heritage becomes material as well. Albaola. is uh, working on shared heritage, shared heritage with, more specific, with Canada. And it is a huge gift that, that we got from the Canada government, the government entity of Canada in charge of UCH. did the discovery that I will introduce to you in a minute. Those are the vessels that were built in the Basque Country, sea ocean vessels from the Renaissance era that open up the oceans to mankind and that now uh, help us have uh, knowledge and understanding of what happened in the whole planet. The archaeologists in Canada discovered the San Juan uh, shipwreck, the Red Bay. That is a port in the Labrador Peninsula. It is a highly interesting shipwreck. It is a vessel that was built in Pasajes Port, close to San Sebastian, in the Basque Country, on the, close to the border with France in 1557 sailed to that uh, port in the documentation it was known as Butus. it used to fish or capture uh, whales and then it sank and it was there uh, for 450 years up until the archaeologists in Canada discovered the shipwreck, that is the Red Bay, and then the shipwreck was excavated. This is a modelic and exemplary archaeological site. At that time, they had to use underwater archaeology techniques that were top-notch 
in the world. I'm not going to dwell into them because I'm not the right person to explain those technical uh, aspects. But I'm bringing with me images from 30 years ago when archaeologists disassembled that vessel part by part. They took it to uh, land, to took it to the surface, they documented it, they registered it, and as a result of that, now we have the building drawings of that uh, sea ocean vessel from, have, uh, uh, from the middle of the 16th century, which allows us to replicate it. And that's where Albaola came in. Uh, I mean, that's what we did. We replicated this model, the scale, and we built the vessel at real scale. It is an exact replica of the vessel. This is a project which has been carried out by Albaola. This is the uh, facility. This is where the whale uh, vessel was built. This is shared heritage. The Canadian government, in an altruistic manner, deliver shared the, the know-how with us with the condition that the construction of the replica is exact is exactly the same that was documented by the Canadian archaeologist without introducing any changes without changing anything the objective of Alvaola is building that vessel and then set it to sail it is a project for experimental of experimental archaeology that has the objectives that I have just mentioned and then, around that construction project, we have set up an international navy or shipping building school where we have people from all over the world that are interested in learning navy construction techniques, uh, wooden techniques from that time. And it has to, some branches, a branch of uh, scientific branch, aims at recovering old techniques, old construction techniques. It, has also, it also branches out in dissemination of that knowledge. And also a name of uh, a social aim. That is to say, we have set up a museum. We have opened a museum after the replica so, this has been a turning point, an absolute change in the view that people in the Basque Country had about the Navy or maritime past. So, it was a past that was kind of lost in myths. The, General, uh, the citizens were not interested in it, but thanks to this project, that maritime history is being known and disseminated. So this is the school of carpentry. We see the participants or the students building the parts, the wooden parts that will uh, of the vessel, and there is another important aspect of it. We have a person circled in red. And that project, this project, has allowed us to give continuity to the wooden craftsmen that had been building vessels in the Basque Country for many years. And then after the 70s, after the changes in the fleets and in the fishing techniques, and they, they went into uh, decay. And actually, they were kind of looked down. They were not valued. The know-how, the techniques were not valued. And uh, 
they were considered to be obsolete. So we have this person here in the photograph. So this person joined the Albaola team. And ever since then, he's been sharing and transferring all the empiric knowledge that he's got that has been passed on from one generation to the next. All in all, this is a cooperation project, a co project of international cooperation. And we find it extremely uh, fruitful and rich. And it also sheds light as to all the uh, shipwrecks that you uh, showed us about in your presentations. So all the shipwrecks are a huge opportunity, great opportunity for all of us. Here we speak different languages, we have different backgrounds, but we have a common language, which is the sea. That is the language that we share, the language of the sea. Any country that I may go to, surely I will find a link between my past and your past. So that link or that aspect of the maritime uh, heritage is extremely valuable. So now I'd like to show you some images of the process of construction of the vessel, the frame, and the body is already finished. I encourage you to come and visit us. Very soon, the vessel will be uh, sailing on the sea. And well, if you want to see it in the ports, just visit us. This is the keel. This is the positioning of the keel, which is exactly the same as the one that was taken out or extracted from the shipwreck. And this is the process. Well, it's a process that has taken several years, been on for years. Well, this is the replica. So this is uh, how it looks like today. So the frame or the hull is finished. We had the support and the sponsor, uh, sponsoring of UNESCO. The flagship of the UCH, Universal UCH, is based on the actual San Juan vessel. Ah, well, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Javier. It's a wonderful example of uh, human, scientific, and technical cooperation, and uh, exactly what we are aiming to. Now, uh, last but not least, our eighth speaker is um, Santiago Serra. Uh, you are an historian and a lawyer. You are part of the uh, Spanish uh, diplomatic service for many years, currently head of the Department of Coordination of Culture, of Culture and Scientific uh, Relations in the ACID, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and you coordinate the relation with uh, UNESCO and uh, you administer the Spain and UNESCO per Cooperation Fund in Trust. So you are a very important piece in, in the landscape and we would like very much to hear uh, from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Being the last is both a privilege and a challenge, as we all know. So, uh, and I was told by the organizers not to use the slideshow for the sake of uh, better time management. So uh, I've been very obedient, and I haven't prepared any anything, no, no PowerPoint presentation. So I'll try to be very straightforward and, and very brief in my in my speech. And I was also told to use the uh, language of Cervantes, so I will go in Spanish. Um, 
Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Before uh, start, starting my presentation, thank you very much to the Ministry of Culture, to our colleagues and collaborators. Thank you very much to UNESCO for their invitation, and also thank you very much to the Secretariat of the Convention 2001. For me, it is a pleasure being here, and I would like to take uh, uh, on some of the uh, sentences uh, provided here by Javier. We have a common language, and that is the language of the sea. We have had a Mediterranean vocation, then an Atlantic vocation, and now a European vocation. But we are, at the end of the day, deeply connected through the sea, because the sea has never been an obstacle. It has been a means for communication. Mountains are barriers, are frontiers. However, um, the sea and the rivers, water has always communicated humans. The first thing that we should start by clarifying is why I am here this morning by representing the uh, scientific department of uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and my director it is part of the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and uh, Cooperation, International Cooperation. There is a reason for that because in this manner we are more agile in terms of financing and therefore the directorate that was created first in 1921 became part of the International Cooperation Agency of Spain. And also because it was 20 years ago when we first started reflecting about the need to link uh, scientific uh, activities with cooperation and sustainable development. We can say in that regard that international Spanish cooperation was a pioneer it was an example followed afterwards by other countries, uh, international cooperation within the ages of UNESCO and the European community. Next uh, year, an important event will be held in Spain, establishing the link, reinforcing the link between uh, international cooperation and culture. For us, for Spanish cooperation and for the Spanish Ministry of Culture, heritage goes beyond restoring old uh, objects, antiques, of exploring sites, of restoring the, the um, old areas of the cities. This is just the first step. Everything that has to do with material, with tangible heritage, has got a direct repercussion in the intangible um, heritage on how people live. For us, as important as restoring a cathedral or a building built in, uh, in the 16th century in Colombia, Mexico, Peru, just as important as uh, making sure how the restoration and the protection of the heritage follows the criteria, um, international criteria. So heritage continues being an, an element for coexistence. This is the basis upon which we have uh, based our work in the last 20 years. We first uh, supported the 2001 convention immediately and then we continued working with the Spanish Navy, with the Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Culture. In this regard, our support has been um, acting on a bilateral level, especially with coastal uh, states, coastal countries, especially from Latin America. And also we have held unilateral collaboration following the signature of the 2001 convention in 2002. Spain uh, constituted a fiduciary fund, fund where our uh, cooperation uh, department uh, works uh, as a representative of the Spanish Kingdom. We have provided uh, contributions and funds and funding with the aim of contributing to cooperation in the fields uh, set out forth uh, by the Convention of the UNESCO and also in those countries that Spain has identified as priority countries. Uh, for example, some Latin American countries and Ibero-American countries. This year we've been working with UNESCO through our fiduciary fund um, if uh, in uh, 
in Leopolis uh, for the resilience of uh, culture, so as to recover the culture fabric as a consequence of the Ukrainian war. In terms of uh, underwater uh, um, field, it is a dimension that has got a fundamental importance to us in, in the field or in the geographical area of Latin America. There are some uh, wrecks um, already uh, sunk in uh, uh, waters which are now part of the territorial waters of some Latin American countries and of some international uh, countries. Right from the first moment, we have supported the Secretariat of the Convention of 2001 so that this would not be a declaration of intentions, but a reality. The UNESCO realized that it was not only a question of ratifying the convention, but it, that it was necessary to organize and on a periodic basis um, meetings and uh, workshops so that uh, countries would be empowered in their efforts. This is why we have always supported the, all the regional meetings organized within the Latin American uh, um, area, Lima, Panama, uh, meetings, uh, ministerial meetings in 2019, 2020, uh, from which a series of recommendations were uh, drawn. The first one was recommendation, so was to ratify the convention. And now in Latin America, 20 uh, countries have ratified the convention, and other countries, thanks to the uh, to our support and cooperation, are in on the verge of ratifying it. Second, another recommendation is uh, trying to standardize the legal procedures of all the state parties because it makes no sense um, signing a convention without being then transposed into uh, the national uh, legislations. Then we have to create uh, the adequate uh, national inventories for the extracted pieces from the wrecks. We also need to reinforce the capacities on, in the field so that there is a better body of experts uh, in underwater archaeology that work in situ, that work on site with the support of international cooperation, but that they work on site so as to preserve the heritage. Uh, third, uh, another recommendation is to prevent looting, um, uh, private uh, public partnerships, um, and uh, those uh, uh, partnerships that then led to a uh, signing of uh, um, of agreements with uh, treasure hunting companies uh, aimed at purposes that had nothing to do with the preservation and conservation of the heritage. And then the implication of the private sector of NGOs and especially experts, scientists. They all have an important uh, uh, role for the staff, for the works of the staff, and we have fully supported them by the organization of missions. Obviously, I don't have time to detail all the collaborations throughout these last 20 years. But in the last uh, six or seven years, we have held two main important projects for underwater uh, heritage. This year, we have tripled our financing and because it has an, a strategic interest to us, to Spain, with virtuous uh, benefits, uh, not only for the heritage, but also for culture as a whole. We have organized two missions for the STAP, one to Guatemala, another one to Panama, together with other two missions to the Republic, Dominican Republic. The first one in May this year, and I was very lucky to take part in that, together with the um, director of the museum, and Paloma, which is the head of our uh, heritage department at the Ministry of Culture. We have also organized uh, consultations and uh, national um, 
workshops in Nicaragua and Philippines, and we have also organized exhibitions so as to cooperate, uh, so as to raise awareness uh, in relation to citizens in Costa Rica, in Canada, and in Chile. As a result of all that, we can really congratulate ourselves of the ratifications, recent ratifications from Costa Rica, from the Dominican, the, uh, from the Dominican Republic, and the Uruguay, which will happen very soon. The project that we have uh, uh, adopted uh, in our last uh, meeting has got four components. The first one is the, the work on the Dominican Republic so as to um, benefit or to improve the documentation and the inventory of the very rich UCH. Approximately 80 uh, wrecks have already been uh, located and have been explored and an enormous number of pieces that have been extracted throughout the years. In this regard, it is um, necessary to work with local authorities and to have a consistent and continuous work. The mission organized uh, together with the STAP started first in May. It was aimed at uh, localizing at uh, Isabel Bay the archeological remains possible archaeological remains. Uh, previous actions had taken place in the past, but for national authorities, it was very important because that was the first Spanish settlements on the Americans during the second journey of uh, Colum uh, Christopher Columbus. Uh, thanks to the um, journals of Bartolomé de las Casas, we know that uh, there might have been hundreds of uh, or, uh, the between six and eight, sorry, six and eight uh, wrecks on that bay. We have worked with local communities, with local authorities, and all that will give rise to a, a conference in Santo Domingo with some conclusions and a road map. As I'm saying, we have given continuity via the support to experts and the training to experts. The second part of the project uh, deals with Panama. We have entered into a signature, into a uh, contract for cooperation for the protection of UCH in 2023. Uh, uh, there is an important wreck there at San Jose that has been an object of uh, looting in the past. Uh, there is a number of pieces that have already been identified. They will be very soon documented and will be showed um, at museums and we will also uh, foster um, awareness uh, raising. We will also fight against the deterioration because of climate change due to acidification. Then we will also organize an, a, a workshop in meeting um, in Campeche in Mexico. There we will work on the basis of the previous um, uh, workshop, but we will uh, make more emphasis on museum um, cap capabilities building. And fourth, um, we will launch a campaign against uh, treasure hunters throughout the Caribbean area. There, uh, um, uh, NGOs will play a fundamental role together with other UNESCO organizations that usually collaborate with e-commerce and the UNESCO. Outside the fiduciary fund, all our external um, action is um, in line with the mandate of uh, uh, preserving unity of action in terms of uh, scientific and heritage uh, actions and also in line with external action and international cooperation action. Therefore, uh, the, uh, the Spanish uh, international cooperation um, is directly aimed at the preservation of UCH. We have a CERCA program, which is a capacity building program for cultural agents. 
and also another project that has been going on for the last 30 years so as to recover historical areas of, uh, of um, colonial cities of uh, the Spanish uh, historical past and finally the uh, capacity building and empowerment of uh, administrative uh, authorities also the programs that we are displaying displaying in, uh, in our embassies and our consulates outside um, have been fundamental for the ratification of the um, ratification of the convention we also work in terms of uh, solving contentious administrative uh, lawsuits that might have a direct repercussion in political terms and we will continue working on that and we will also aiming at bridging the gaps so uh, that via the entering into force and the presentation of memorandum of understandings just as professor Aznar was uh, telling us on the first day we can solve some problems which can entail a higher complexity always uh, including the actors uh, taking place in uh, uh, and participated by the uh, representatives of the Armada, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Defense, and Ministry of Culture. Thank you very much. This is all on my side. Gracias, Santiago. I think we have to conclude now. Do we have time for questions or? No. OK. So, OK, you have the floor then. <laughs> we need a lunch break, yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for all our panelists and for all these uh, very rich uh, presentations and uh, you have illustrated man magnificently the, uh, the uh, cooperation and uh, how cultural diplomacy is contributing to, to the work of uh, the international community. Thank you so much. Yes, we. <laughs>
character or status of a specific uh, category. Thank you very much, um, Carmen, for your brief uh, conclusions. Hopefully, we will uh, have a now a legal system uh, category for UCH. Well, we are making progress. We are trying to achieve that, but yet there is a long way to go. Um, I coordinated the second uh, roundtable about how to implement projects uh, regarding protection of UCH from two viewpoints, the viewpoints of the countries that ratified and those who have So in general, the scientific and technical archaeology always works in compliance with the annex of the convention, the ICOMOS, TATA, and there is a interest on the part of uh, citizens, archaeologists, researchers to protect the heritage, knowing that it is cultural heritage that belongs to us, that to all that it is for us, and therefore we need good research and good recovery of that information that we get from archaeological sites. That is, on the one hand, good positioning in terms of the importance of UCH, but as Carmen mentioned, in, in, regarding his her panel. So conventions are aimed at avoiding uh, looting and mistreatment of UCH. Positive aspects for which the convention should be ratified, others than improving, fostering co international cooperation among state parties, but it also because it helps give visibility to UCH we know that after, well, with the registering of good practices, we are, the visibility is given delivered to UCH, and now red state parties are more aware about the UCH, they devote more scientific, technical, and human resources to protect it, and also to uh, implement and transpose the convention into the legal system. Then another issue that was raised, whether federal states or not, well, we all agree that it is a complex text, but it goes beyond the convention, goes beyond culture. It is also has a number of international relationship implications where foreign affairs ministries are very much involved. And now I'd like to give the floor to Krista, who was the uh, chairperson of the third round table. Of the um, challenges related to UCH, uh, notably uh, those uh, um, uh, concerning climate change, but also in the industrial development and pollution. Um, we had a very rich debate um, and discussion. Um, some I ideas emerged as to what can be done about that. Um, I would start by uh, the emphasis on continued advocacy and awareness raising at the global level both uh, to um, remind uh, the um, international community about the existence of UCH, uh, which has a value in itself, because it carries uh, stories of humankind, but also as a means of understanding and addressing wider global challenges and threats. And this is, I think, something that uh, very often is overlooked. Um, second recommendation uh, perhaps could be um, summarized as think globally but act locally. And this is, of course, uh, to emphasize uh, the importance of engaging local communities uh, so that they take ownership of this heritage, that they are aware of that, but also that they benefit from uh, the studies but also the uh, livelihoods uh, related to uh, this heritage. Um, and then um, in relation to local communities, also the emphasis on um, uh, civil society actors and NGOs, and we had uh, the um, accredited NGOs represented on our panel, who are of course a valuable uh, source of information, data and research that we need to draw on more systematically. Um, it was also emphasized that it, was, uh, it is very important, uh, of course, to translate the convention into uh, policy and, um, and uh, mechanisms at the national level uh, that help us more systematically inventory and map uh, underwater cultural heritage uh, 
and do that proactively uh, in, uh, before the, um, any sort of projects of uh, industrial development or others. Uh, and also perhaps something that uh, is important to underline is um, the importance to uh, promote cooperation among the different actors and stakeholders, that we still tend to work in silos, uh, the ministries uh, that are responsible for C uh, um, and the ministries of culture uh, do not necessarily always work as uh, they should uh, on the, and be in sync. Um, and then a third uh, group of uh, recommendations, I think, was more directly addressed to the Secretariat of UNESCO uh, to emphasize also the importance of uh, the monitoring or the implementation of the convention uh, through results-based framework uh, and the questionnaire and the reporting. Um, and also um, uh, uh, an idea emerged to possibly um, continue working within this group of uh, Western European and America uh, countries and uh, look at a possibility of developing a regional strategy to better uh, promote this work, uh, uh, this joint uh, work. Thank you. Gracias, Krista. Bueno, y para unas pequeñas conclusiones sobre so some conclusions about the fourth panel, the first one that we had today, about protection and access to UCH. I think that in the first parts of that panel, when we discussed protection of UCH from the viewpoint of the law enforcement agencies, the main idea is collaboration. If we do, if all the stakeholders do not collaborate, prevention of these crimes would be uh, all the more difficult collaboration between experts, archaeologists, administration, law enforcement agencies, including customs departments, which are just essential to prevent those crimes. And also engagements of uh, collaboration with the civil society to raise awareness and to disseminate the value of UCH. And as well, awareness, well, regarding access. Access to UCH is about dissemination of archaeological sites and the dissemination which is very, very important and that has a very important aspect, that is to say in situ visits to the sites, which are tremendously appealing that we would all love to visit, but it requires significant management activities. So I would like to highlight initiatives such as the Bow Ferrer, with, uh, well, they do previous awareness raising in museums before diving, and then an immersion, and also the new technologies, artificial intelligence and virtual reality, and how they can help us. Here I would like to quote Tim Camping, says, we need to be proactive instead of reactive. So this is the message that uh, we should keep in mind when it comes to protecting and accessing UCH. Not only dissemination, but dissemination also through research. Researching for uh, advocacy. We need to have good research so that we can advocate for our UCH. And I would like to finish or to take a positive message, to take away a positive message, a positive idea that we are all well aware of, and it was very well explained to us, to us by Alexander Monteiro. That is to say the awful and damaging uh, activities of treasure hunters in very many countries of the world, not only in the Caribbean, but across the world, and how those places where the convention has been implemented and ratified at least those private contracts with those companies have ended. So it is a takeaway message. We know that the convention, the convention is effective to stop treasure hunting. The yeah, very rich experiences which uh, have been illustrated during the last panel, I would just say that uh, building international cooperation uh, generates uh, growing awareness and education, it's a key word, um, allows shared concerns for tangible but also intangible heritage, which is a dimension we definitely have to take into account, contributes to elaborate a common language on protection of cultural heritage, guarantee the prevention of conflicts, 
and last but not least, strengthen the uh, peaceful coexistence for all of us through cultural heritage. Thank you. Con estas conclusiones, eh, yo... So, with these, uh, these conclusions, lead us to the final conclusions. We'd like to give the floor to Krista for final remarks. I don't know whether the ambassador also would like to say a few words. And uh, Santiago, you may also take the floor if you so wish. Um, very briefly, because I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we are all eager to um, go and enjoy uh, the good Spanish food. Um, but um, I, I, I want to reiterate uh, uh, really our heartfelt thanks to the Spanish authorities. Uh, and here I'm referring to, of course, the excellent team of the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but also I see it, uh, as I said in the opening, um, I, I believe that Spain is a... Um, uh, holds the, the flag of the underwater cultural heritage very high at the international level and we appreciate cooperation with you very, very much. Uh, as regards the meeting, um, I, I, I got a feeling that there is a very well-formed UCH family that we have here together. Um, now, um, our ambition and challenge, I think, is to uh, let this family grow and, uh, and flourish also in the countries which haven't ratified the convention. So um, I, I was particularly um, interested and happy to hear uh, actually a proposal uh, to, to make uh, uh, these uh, meetings of Group 1 countries regular, possibly uh, to gather uh, us every two years. And uh, I understand that uh, France may, may be uh, positively looking into organizing the next meeting in two years' time. So that's, I think, a, um, a very good uh, news uh, as, we, as we leave uh, this beautiful city of Madrid. Uh, on behalf of the, uh, the Secretariat and, and, and UNESCO, I, I, I want to reiterate our commitment to working with all member states, uh, those who have ratified the convention and are states parties to the convention, as well as those who haven't, to, um, to bring a UCH, uh, keep it uh, in the discussions also at the global level within the UN decade uh, 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 on oceans, but also as we um, now start pre preparations for the next Mondiacult to be hosted uh, in Barcelona. So um, given the commitment of the Spanish authorities to UCH, I, I'm sure that there will be um, due attention also uh, given to UCH uh, in the next uh, meeting. Uh, so I would say, um, I, I, let's, let's see if not earlier than in Barcelona is in 2025. Thank you. Thank you, and first of all, let me join uh, Krista in, in thanking uh, the Spanish authorities, uh, uh, particularly the Ministry of, 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 of Culture, for having uh, organized this, uh, this very useful uh, meeting. And uh, what I find particularly valuable in this meeting is that you, you have gathered uh, the whole stakeholders, which means the, the governmental officials, uh, uh, a lot of uh, people from from academia, uh, uh, but also from from the civil society and both from the state parties and let me put it this way, not yet state parties of uh, uh, on the on, on the convention and. Um, my conclusion is that uh, the additional reason that everybody, every country should consider ratifying uh, this convention is, after having uh, listened to all of you, is that the convention sets an institutional framework for cooperation, a framework for, for sharing knowledge, for sharing best, best practices, for sharing failures, uh, uh, obviously. 
and it allows to, in that sense, it allows to, 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 to better safeguard our common human underwater cultural heritage. And, and my suggestion is, first of all, I, I would be more than happy to, 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 to see another follow-up uh, meeting in, in Group 1. We'll be working also on, on, in Group 2 on, on the increase on the enhanced, but we are much, much better in Group, 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 group 2. And my suggestion would be also to, to present the conclusions uh, of this uh, meeting back, uh, back in Paris uh, uh, at UNESCO as at the Group 1 uh, uh, coordination uh, uh, meeting. You are having a great ambassador right now. And I'm, I'm not speaking on his behalf, but it, it would be very much useful just to, to, to keep raising awareness, not so much on convent, 2001 convention, but awareness on benefits of being a state party of 2001 uh, convention. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias por parte de la ECI del Ministerio. Well, thank you very much on behalf of the ECI and on behalf of the Ministry of, Min of Foreign Affairs, from the Ministry of uh, Culture. I would like to reiterate my thanks to the Ministry of Culture for the work, for the organization of this meeting, which is essential so as to uh, awareness uh, raising. I would like to convey a message which is fundamental, Spain, will always be supporting UNESCO in its efforts to protect UCA because we believe that it is part of our history and it is part of the common uh, history of humanity that we all share. Group one, what can I say? We need you. So this is the message I want to convey. Please do support us in all our efforts, in all our activities. We also have an important projection. I have referred a lot to Latin America, which is an area of interest, an area of work for us, where there is a lot of work to be done. But at the same time, we are growing, uh, we are working more and more with uh, Ireland. We are also working on the Skirky Banks projects. And for all that, we need a critical mass at UNESCO, especially in Group 1 and in Group C, that supports us in our work and in our efforts. Thank you very much. Well, just to conclude, on behalf of the Ministry of Culture and the Director General of Fine Arts, thank you very much to all of you for your presence, uh, your presence throughout yesterday, your presence throughout uh, today. Thank you very much to UNESCO for the previous work that they have conducted. Also, thank you very much for your active participation Every time we present the proposals to UNESCO, they are always uh, very well received. Uh, you always support us, especially in the organization of this um, um, meeting and also in the implementation of this convention, which sometimes is not exempt from difficulties. Thank you very much to the team of our sub-directorate, which has been very intense throughout the last uh, few months. And I would say that the conclusions are that UCH uh, deserves a special look, deserves a special attention. It is part of our cultural heritage in a broader sense. But because of the area or the means where it is located, and because of the information that provides us with, it does not belong to anyone, but it is a uh, heritage that tells us about our common history, our common stories, that uh, informs us about our tangible and intangible heritage. It uh, forces us to be up to date in terms of new technologies. It is um, the UCH that has been benefited from the advancement of new technologies and the advancement of uh, diving uh, techniques. It is a UCH that has been under a uh, danger at risk uh, uh, recently, and this is why it has forced us to work uh, actively to update, to upgrade ourselves in our uh, skills. It is a very important and specific type of heritage that requires specific measures and actions, 
and we will continue working in these uh, regards together with the civil society, uh, with NGOs, and with our, all the stakeholders uh, uh, and uh, main actors. Uh, nothing of this is not uh, possible. We will continue so as to continue enlarging and growing in the community of stakeholders, all joined by the same objective, and that is the preservation of the UCH and also obtaining uh, more and more support Support to the group C, uh, to the group one and group uh, C, uh, so that we can all continue in our efforts. So we will now break for lunch, and afterwards we will uh, visit our museum, our maritime museum, which is um, essential. Also, thanks uh, has also been possible thanks to the collaboration of the Ministry of Defence and the Ministry of the Interior. Without them, it would have, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Without them, it would have been impossible to organise this uh, meeting and to uh, conduct our activities. Thank you very much again.